Welcome to Words on Words, a podcast presented by the University of Nevada Reno Writing Center. Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Words on Words. Uh, I am your host, Iris, and for this episode, we are joined by Ashley. Ashley, Hello. if you'd like to go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> uh, my name is Ashley. I am a junior. I study English literature right now, and I hope to become a professor of African American literature one Ooh, day. Oh, yeah. wow. Fancy. Yeah, super fancy. <laughs> so our, our topic for discussion today is going to be uh, poetry. So either favorite poets, uh, favorite books of poetry, favorite individual poems, favorite subgenres of poetry, wherever we kind of end up. So you can take this as finding uh, new authors. It could be just reaffirming your own beliefs in whatever poetry you really like. Um, but that's our discussion today. Um, so Ashley, if you want to go ahead and we'll start with um, either your favorite individual poems, favorite books of poetry, poets, wherever you want to start. Who, who do you like? <laughs> uh, okay, well, my favorite book of poetry, and it's also written by my favorite poet, is For Colored Girls Who Have Considered Suicide When the Rainbow Was Enough by Entosaki Shenge. It's a Koreo poem, so it's okay. a play. It's a playwright. Oh, interesting. Um, but every scene from the play is a different poetic work. Hmm. And the whole book focuses like primarily on women of color, specifically African American women, and kind of their struggle with romantic relationships, like their role in the world at large, and like sexual relationships embedded within that. So I feel like this book is very important, even though it's not really popular and not a lot of people know about it. I know that it's been adapted into a movie. I didn't really like the movie very what much. What movie? Um, for Colored Girls. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't, like, the movie was good, but I feel like it didn't really get at the heart of the, like, poetry in the book and how powerful it is. So okay. that's my favorite interesting yeah. and and why is it your favorite or, or what do you like about it is it how it's the the language that's used is it kind of the poetic form oh, is there's it... so many things <laughs> that i love about it um i really love the poetic form um each of the poems inside of the book is written like stylistically so they kind of create pictures with oh. how, like physically how they're written on the pages um it's also the diction inside of the like poems is very interesting and it kind of mimics african-american dialogue too okay. and not everything is spelled correctly like i guess correctly in an english academia <laughs> sort of sort of way mm -hmm. um but i think that it really speaks to like the the experiences of black women and i think that that's really important because that's not often talked about especially like in literature classes that aren't primarily focused on African-American experiences. Right, and probably sense. poetry in particular. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like a lot of what she gets at with kind of the themes of her poetry are sexuality, things that people really don't want to talk about, but that also need to be talked about. And sexuality in relation to black women specifically is something that's completely like suppressed in academia so I think that it's really I don't know I feel like it's it's very important and I would definitely suggest it to anyone but okay. specifically <laughs> like black women who are kind of at odds with their their place okay I don't, I don't know if that's the best way to describe it but yeah <laughs> and it's not it's not a terribly lengthy book so it's not no, yeah. it, it wouldn't require a, a ton of time commitment or kind of going outside of I don't know what someone typically reads. Yeah, the whole book is only 88 pages. And all of the poems are relatively short. And they're all, like, very... I mean, when I started, I was sucked into it immediately. <laughs> okay. So reading it definitely won't take very much time. I read the whole thing in about a day. So, yeah. What about um, you? Are, what are your favorite poems? I, I don't, don't I don't know that I, <laughs> <laughs> that I read poetry, really. I was trying to think. I was like, what... What poetry have I have I ever read? <laughs> and I don't seem to read it much. And I'm not sure why. I don't know if it, it's um, kind of too artsy for me. So I'm, I'm more of a nonfiction person. Ah, I, like to, um, I like to read about facts and things that are, are kind of um, going on now. And, and so I read like military history and kind of mm. stuff like that. And there are a number of um, kind of poets that came out of World War II, um, came out of uh, Vietnam. I just don't 
read them <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> and that it doesn't make them any any less factual about their experience. It doesn't make them any any less um, even academic in a sense. Yeah. But it's just not something I, I gravitate towards, <laughs> That's which fair. is weird. Um, and then actually in my like Vietnam class, we had a whole book of kind of short stories and poetry written Ooh. by... Uh, Vietnam vets, some and nurses and soldiers and things like that. Um, So that was interesting, and those were those were fine. I enjoyed reading those. I don't know. I don't know why I'm not. It's just like not something that you. I just I don't gravitate towards poetry. I've written poetry. I've written a bunch of poetry, Ah. (laughs) but I don't. How were you at writing poetry? Don't I don't know. It was like high school and I was going through like my angsty like teen years and I'm like, I'm going to be a poet and I'm going to write Girl, poetry about here. like boys I like and, <laughs> <laughs> and like the struggles of, of things. Of and, being a high schooler. Yeah. The, See, the, okay. The struggles of life in high school. I think it's really funny too because I did the same thing mm-hmm. and I feel like, I don't know, I feel like with poetry, a lot of it is definitely learning how to use language and so I kind of... I don't write poetry well, but I have <laughs> I have dabbled in writing poetry. And I think that it taught me how to articulate better, like writing poetry mm-hmm. and figuring out which words have which effects on the reader. Right. Because when reading poems, in comparison to prose at least, like every single word is placed within the poem for a reason. Right. And so when writing poetry, figuring out which words are placed for what reason and like why you feel like those words should be highlighted or whatever actually helped me in learning how to just like speak like a human being and like, <laughs> <laughs> I can be, communicate yeah and not be just like a wreck where I'm like what am I saying so that's actually yeah. a good point um in and I don't know if if when reading poetry this happens necessarily, but definitely in writing it, you think more about how you're presenting the language um, stylistically. Definitely. So you mentioned um, for Shenge. Right? Mm-hmm. Did I say that right? Um, how the, it's not just here's four lines, here's a verse, here's four lines, here's a verse. Yeah, no, not <laughs> they're, at all. They're styled in a way that is meant to depict something. So it's using not just the language, it's using the page. It's, it's kind of using everything you have at your disposal to create a message, to create a meaning. And I think that's important just for every day, knowing what your language means, knowing yeah. what you're doing with your language um, and seeing it done kind of in other ways. I wonder if we're all kind of forced to read the, the like Shakespearean sonnets <laughs> and we're forced to read the, the like ones. go over the A, B, A, B rhyme scheme yeah. and <laughs> have your four line verses and your like big pentameter. Roses are red, violets are blue poems. Yeah, and like limericks. The second grade. Everybody yeah. loves limericks. <laughs> um, but I, I wonder if some of us get stuck there and we're like that's all poetry is like it's just gonna be people talking about like flowers and their love (laughs) yeah and like love or their unrequited love in a series of like 16 lines (laughs) and that's it (laughs) and that's disgusting (laughs) and like i mean at least with this work uh specifically i feel like the fact that it is a choreo poem and it's meant to be like a play a dance that also shapes its meaning too because reading it you you get characters to it you you're essentially reading a play but the entire play is just in poetry and it's not necessarily rhymed but it's still like is using poetic devices to create that like genre kind of okay um so i don't know i think that i did definitely get stuck in the rut of like shakespearean sonnets learning about (laughs) petrarch you know unrequited love what have you um but I mean, my mom actually introduced me to this book like a really long time ago, okay. probably when I was too young to even really like <laughs> to <look> understand <laughs> anything. Um, but I'm glad that she introduced it to me because, you know, I was stuck in that road of being like, okay, poetry is just like rhyming, rhyming, rhyming words, mm-hmm. whatever. It doesn't really mean anything. But examining poetry when it's not just a square of text on a page that rhymes with like a bunch of symbolic meaning yeah. whatever um use those literary devices yeah help metaphors me to more. like now and see after reading like books like this and after reading poetry that doesn't follow that style mm-hmm. and like doesn't stay within that box i've learned to appreciate that kind okay. of poetry more <laughs> like now i can get with the boxed poetry so so, so would you say that that the i don't know if if 
calling it non-traditional poetry is appropriate, um, but more free-form poetry, I yes. guess, would be the, the correct term. Um, that free-form poetry is, is a little more interesting or perhaps more um, accessible, maybe, to someone who I would think was so. not into Shakespeare. <laughs> They're <laughs> scarred by Shakespeare. And <laughs> um, and yeah, I would, I would definitely think so. I feel like as someone who grew up enjoying prose a lot more than I liked poetry until like recently Mm -hmm. um I think that reading freeform poetry free verse um like unrhymed poems helped me get into it a little bit better because it kind of had that prose like edge to it or wasn't like okay every single word rhymes cool that shapes meaning because blah 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 like you were able to get the meaning through the content more so than through the form but I definitely think that formed poetry like traditional poetry also through its form creates a meaning so like the alliterative sequencing of words creates a meaning Mm -hmm. the amount of stressed syllables inside of a line also creates a meaning and you know within that you're able to kind of parse through and figure out like yes this is what they're saying in the poem but through the form specifically this is also what's being said or like these are the things that are being mimicked right and that's still (laughs) that's still a practice in choosing the language so if you are required by your form to rhyme or you are required to have some sort of of setup you are forced to choose particular words particular wording particular (laughs) syllables how many words you can have in a line um so it it forces you to have to be more more specific or more particular hypothetically more thoughtful in that writing process yeah Um, i agree with that definitely um so you you had mentioned that you weren't into poetry kind of earlier where would you mm-hmm. say kind of your your shift into poetry was Ooh, what a question <laughs> <laughs> um probably well okay so like throughout elementary school and what have you they made you write like acrostic poems they mm-hmm. made you go through limericks what have you and this is gonna sound so ridiculous but <laughs> I remember in an episode of Spongebob, um, there was... Spongebob brought me yes, to poetry. Spongebob brought me poetry. Well, in my school, like in my elementary school, we had to, we had like National Poetry Week or something like that. And for the whole week, whoever carried a poem in their pocket, like teachers would approach you and be like, hey, read me your poem in your pocket. And if you had one, you would get prizes. And then whoever had it for the whole week got this huge prize. I didn't win the huge prize. Oh. But the poem that I chose was from Spongebob. And I remember just thinking that it was, like, so funny. And I was like, oh, like, this is kind of cute or whatever. And then, like, as I grew up and got to middle school and, like, learned about limericks and learned about kind of the shape of that poem, I was like, whoa, (laughs) SpongeBob knows things. Like, wow, this is so cool. Um, But then, like, in high school when we actually formally started studying poetry was kind of when I learned to appreciate, like, the language more. Because, like I said, it taught me how to articulate things that have meaning to them as opposed to just words yeah yeah picking words carefully yeah Yeah. not just not just picking words that rhyme (laughs) yeah exactly so you're like i need to rhyme cat with with hat with hat (laughs) how do i put words in between cat and hat i don't and then writing it yourself and kind of realizing that you're not just trying to rhyme that's true and poetry is everywhere i mean like i said like poetry was in spongebob we all grew up with the cat in the hat we all grew up on dr seuss well song lyrics for the most part are that too yeah are poetry that's true poems in some way shape or form yeah you have not it doesn't necessarily have to rhyme though most of them do but you're still separated into verses you still have um kind of a chorus you still have to fit um, the lines into a certain beat or a certain kind of tune. You're right. So you have to choose those words or you just don't. And it <laughs> sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's nothing. Um, then it's just yeah, annoying. no, that's definitely true. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of hip hop. So rap, poetry, like obviously. Yeah. But I've also gotten into like spoken word over music. Oh. Which is rap, but, like, not really. Yeah, (laughs) rap-ish. Because it doesn't always have a rhyme scheme, but I think that, like, the way that whoever is speaking presents the words when speaking them, too, Mm -hmm. more so than just when writing them, also has kind of an effect on what the listener gets from it. So if you stress a word when you're speaking it, that could 
have some that could have a very different meaning when stressed than like if I'm just reading it on a page and I don't even stress oh, that right. word. If that makes sense. I didn't even think of spoken word. Yeah, so that's did I don't really know much about spoken word. I mean, we do have our, our open mic night that the Writing Center puts on kind of every semester. I think, I think it's only been two semesters. I can't say every semester. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have an open mic night. I'm pretty sure people have done spoken word. Um, or um, I think one of the consultants that used to work here did spoken word um, with poetry kind of workshop, which was, I guess, somewhat difficult. But I, I mean, that is true that spoken word gives you this other avenue of creating poetry and presenting poetry. That's yeah. that's kind of Have you ever done spoken different. word before? No, I'm terrified of public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I'd get up there and I'd be like, words. <laughs> Help. Roses are red. <laughs> SpongeBob. I'd be like, remember to breathe. <laughs> Inhale, exhale. Thank you, everyone. That was Bye. My okay. <laughs> Run. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't either, but you know, I think I would like to. Because like I said, writing poetry helped me learn how to choose words well, but I feel like speaking poetry would teach me how to speak well. Yeah. So I don't know. Really you can do everything think. with yeah, poetry. Wow, poetry's it's... wild. <laughs> yeah, I feel like <laughs> I don't I need, know. I though, need but... that bumper sticker. <laughs> poetry is wild. But I mean like spoken word poetry is it's so it's so much more about like the performance Mm -hmm. of poetry than it is about the poetry itself. So I feel like, and I mean, just watching like Def Jam poetry online and things like that, um, there's a style in how people speak their poetry. And I think that that, like, I don't know, poetry is just all about style and Mm -hmm. that style can come from how it's written. That style can come from how it's like physically written on a page, how it's words, come together to create that and also how it's like read and spoken so I mean I guess kind of using that as a (laughs) roadway to something else I think that reading poetry out loud also can help in learning to enjoy it that makes sense oh yeah yeah because I feel because when back in the day yeah yeah I used to read like a lot of poetry in my head and then I would be like this doesn't mean anything to me but then like once (laughs) I learned that I need to read it out loud in order to get meaning from it um I think that that was also something that helped me to understand poetry. Yeah, and, and you might get distracted, especially if you're not used to reading poetry, distracted by some of the like physical form. You're yeah. like, how am I supposed to follow where you're going with this? Yeah. <laughs> Where's yeah. the next line? I can't understand. Yeah. Then it might be that taking a minute to read it out loud, read it to yourself, read it out loud on an airplane, just, just oh for fun. <laughs> Just totally freak everyone just out. Just do that. Just Break freak everybody spoken out. spoken word like in a really inappropriate yeah. place. <laughs> just in line, boarding on Southwest. <laughs> yeah, let's do start, that one day. Start reading that. Yeah. <laughs> and on that, uh, on that note of where to take poetry with you in life, um, we'll go ahead and bring this podcast to a close. I'd like to thank Ashley uh, thank for you. joining in this discussion. I'd like to thank you, our listener, and we hope you'll join us next time. Bye.